Hello there, I'm Shane Nolach from activegrowth.com. I do quite a lot of webinars and in this video I'm going to share with you my entire webinar setup, which is a bit less complicated than it looks, especially if you're looking from there, but not much less complicated. The only thing here is ignore this. This is the camera that I'm recording on for this video. Ignore this. This is the other camera I'm recording for this video. So these two cameras are not part of my webinar setup. I'll talk you through the elements of my webinar setup and the, why they are the way they are. I wouldn't say that this is, you know, the recommended setup. I'm using a lot of gear I have anyway. But from the logic of how I set things up, it will help you get a good webinar setup for your own events as well, even if you don't use the exact same tools and setup. Let's talk about my two screen setup. I really prefer working with two screens for a webinar. And the way it works is on my laptop screen is where I have my webinar hosting interface. This is where I'll have all of my webinar controls, chat, questions and answers, all this kind of stuff. And on my second screen, which is just a screen that's attached to the laptop as a secondary screen, here is where I share my presentation and I do my screen sharing and all of that. So first, an important distinction here is that I almost always on my webinars, I do all three of the kind of presentation media. I have parts where I'm just talking to the camera. So live video, I have presentation slides that I share and I usually also show stuff on a website or I show how to use a piece of software or something like that. The next part here is I have the webcam here and the webcam is just, it's an external webcam because my built-in webcam is terrible. This is a Logitech C920, which is decent, but it's also let me down a couple of times. Um, so that's not necessarily a recommendation for this webcam, but have a webcam. And it's set up here to be as close as possible to eye level. I can't get it quite up to eye level and it would also obstruct my view a bit too much. But I want to have something where I'm not like looking down at my audience the whole time. So that's here. And I also position this in such a way that if I'm looking at my presentation slides, I'm looking in the direction of the webcam, right? So if the webcam was like over here and I'm looking at my slides then I'm constantly kind of looking away from my audience while I'm trying to address them. So that's why I put it here kind of in front of my screen like this. Now, the way I share my presentation is like this. So I'm using Google Slides here, same with PowerPoint or whatever else. If I start the presentation, it goes full screen here and then I will share my screen. So in the webinar software, I would share screen number two like this. So I won't share just an application or just a tab, a browser tab or something like that. I will share this whole screen with my audience. Now, there are two reasons why I share the screen and not, I don't upload a presentation and just share the presentation slides or just share this specific tab. The first reason is that if you upload your presentation slides, you can't have any animations in there. And I often use animations to bring in elements one by one on a slide to explain a process or something. And so if I can only have slides, entire slides, then I could still do that to some degree, but it's a bother. So I'd rather do this. Also, when you convert a presentation to PDF, sometimes it screws up the fonts a little bit, doesn't look as nice anymore. But most importantly, this way I can very easily switch between my slides and showing something on the screen. And it doesn't matter whether I need to show something, a desktop app or a browser tab or whatever, I can just switch back and forth effortlessly between my presentation slides and whatever else I need to show on the screen. I don't have to go back here and go, oh wait, switch, share a different app and, and so on, right? It makes it easier for me that way. And so this way I have also a nice separation because I have all my hosting related stuff, all the webinar room stuff is on one screen. And then on the other screen, I just have an unobstructed view of everything I'm sharing with my audience. Another point about these two screens is that both of these are 4K screens, but for my webinar, I turn down the resolution to 1080p. So in the settings, I turn down the resolution for both of them to 1920 by 1080. And there are two reasons I'm doing that. The first is that the laptop will struggle more trying to render two 4K screens, plus the webcam feed, plus do the streaming, plus everything else that happens during webinar. So it's more likely to get noisy and start overheating. And secondly, I don't want to send too much data up to a webinar or to a live stream. 
because generally your live streams and webinars are not going to be in 4K anyway. So it's better to send a smaller resolution right away than to send this massive 4K video stream that then has to be like downsampled or compressed or whatever. You're basically saving one step there by not uploading 4K when it's not gonna be shown in 4K anyway. So that is the on computer setup. Another very important part here is the audio. And what I'm using is I'm using a Rode Video Micro connected to a Zoom H1 and all of that is connected to a mic stand boom pole type setup. Now, the reason I'm using this is, there's two reasons. First of all, I found that the audio I get from this is the cleanest audio for this kind of setup that I can get out of the tools I have. Needless to say, if you use the onboard audio from your webcam or from your laptop, it's gonna be horrible, okay? That's gonna sound really, really bad. You don't wanna do that. If you use your typical, you know, if you have like a headset, usually also doesn't sound great. But the other thing is, and the more typical solution would be to use something like this. This is a, a Rode mic, which in this case comes with this little stand that you can put here. And this sounds nice, but what I found is it sounds nice if it's like really close to me, which means that on the webcam feed, it will be covering half my face. And I've also had either this setup standing here or coming in on a mic stand either in front of me or coming in from the side. That gives me better audio quality than this setup, but it tends to constantly be in the way. So again, because I'm often showing things on screen, I'm showing how to do things, I need to be able to get my hands onto the keyboard and onto the mouse. And if I have a microphone here in my face, unless it's on a kind of a swing arm type thing and coming from the top, it's just often in the way. And so because I currently don't have one of those swing arm thingies, they are good if you can get them, then, um, and I have this set up, that's why I use this instead. Another important point is that if you have a microphone in front of you on a stand on your desk, unless you've got a really good shock mount, when you're typing, the vibrations that causes will sound horrible for your audience. So that's another thing to avoid. And this is why I prefer to have a basically suspended microphone. And again, the, the video micro is a pretty cheap microphone and it's better than the old um, video mic pro, which I also have, but I just don't like what this sounds like. And that's why I'm using this setup. And again, this is the video micro going into a Zoom H1 and this is being used as a USB mic. So my computer recognizes this as just any external microphone. Another factor in this setup is that I have a light. I'm using a studio light here. Now, this wouldn't always be necessary. If I'm doing a webinar during daytime, I could just open the curtains and I would have decent light here. The reason I have this studio light is for all my other video work, but it also means that I don't have to use like indoor lighting or just, you know, the, the room lighting. And I don't think this is a massively important factor, but you know, if you just turn on the room lights, it usually doesn't cause very pleasing lighting or it's not bright enough and the webcam will struggle and be noisy and so on. And so just having a good bright light that's coming at you is good. Whether that's a studio light or whether it's just open curtains, it's almost always gonna be better than just turning on the light switch in the room. Another aspect to this setup is that I'm standing. So I have this adjustable desk, which can be a seated desk or a standing desk, and I prefer to present while standing. And that is just because I find it easier to, you know, you look, I feel like you look more alive and more energized when you're standing than if you're like slumping in a chair. And it's also easier to have a good voice, kind of good voice projection while standing. So I prefer this kind of setup. Okay, so that's a look at the webinar setup that I've been using lately. Like I said, it's not necessarily the most reasonable setup and it's certainly not a travel friendly setup, but that's how I'm doing it right now. And it's helping me do webinars at a high quality and pretty efficiently as well. Now, if you have any questions about this or if you'd like to see what my travel webinar setup looks like, let me know by leaving a comment below.